of risk. What's what's new? Is it when you talk, you talk to executives about risk. Are you having the same conversation now you had four years ago or eight years ago? Not at all. As a matter of fact, risk is not about details. And it's not about measurements and it's not about systems. It's about vision. So when I listened to, to, the, to the latest interview about Volcker rules, you can't quite control this kind of complexity through regulation. It has to be the vision by executives and the boards on how value is created in finance. So you're and suggesting what, is there. You, what you heard from Sheila Baer, you would say was a bit off the mark or a bit naive? I just think it's not going to be effective because uh, given the complexity of financial markets and financial institutions, you simply can't approach it through formulaic terms. It would be much more powerful if executives and boards of directors embrace the notion that managing risk and understanding risk is the key component of creating value. Uh, uh, and this is, this is important, folks. Game theory, that's the economic phrase here for reacting to the other person, reacting on that. I mean, politicians, for the most part, Leo Tillman, they don't really think in a game theory manner. They're just trying to get reelected. You know, the human component has been something that has been front and center in our work and, and thoughts that one thing is to measure things, one thing is, is to regulate things, but it's really about human beings creating value in thinking, and you just can't approach it formulaically. Uh, earlier this morning, Lee, I want to do this. Earlier this morning on Bloomberg Surveillance, on Bloomberg Radio, I spoke with David Ritter of Argus Research. I asked him how banks are managing risk. The banking business has always been very, very cyclical. You follow the typical pattern, which is that, you know, you, you chase a hot area, and if they chase that growth, it turns into a bubble, it pops, and then everybody finds religion. They clean up the mess, but then they start taking risks again because that's the business they're in. And you can see here with this chart over here, a new city group with old risk, and you can see how they were chasing growth along with other people chasing derivatives and such. Leo Tillman, you've got to convince me that the boardrooms are different at the banks right now. Sell me on that idea. They're not different yet. The hope is that they will be uh, different in the future as a result of fairly intense scrutiny both in D.C. and here. But the, but, the, but the notion that the nature of this business is always cyclical and there's nothing you can do about it is qu quite outdated. As a matter of fact, it shouldn't be this way. You shouldn't be chasing yesterday's opportunities. You have so many tools at your disposal with your financial m markets and balance sheets and derivatives that you can really turn this business into a non-cyclical value-creating business. Is communication a risk tool? Absolutely. It's part of it. And communication. Because my, my reading of all these 40, you know, the books, the books that I've had in on the crisis, I mean, we're up to here, Leo. I mean, it's, it's like, I, I can't, I, I'm too short. I can't stretch that tall. The bottom line is nobody was talking to nobody who was talking to nobody. Has that changed? It's, uh, it's changing somewhat. But the gap between the language I just that people my are not doing that. It's, <laughs> killing me. It's, it's the gap between the language that people at risk yeah. speak and executives speak. That gap still remains. And, and bridging that gap is all about changing the, the narrative. It's changing the narrative from risk being the control tool that, you, that prevents you from creating value, all the way to risk being the strategic tool that you use to identify opportunities and think about things. Which is a company that seems to be out front in this. We, you know, we have the way that 3M goes through product review. You see all the focus today on Apple Computer and Mr. Jobs' illness. Which company seems to fold risk into traditional management development? Which is the model going forward? Well, the only conversation we can truly have is about companies that articulate it publicly because you can't quite see okay, it. It's fair. Uh, so so I would say uh, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, BlackRock and Pimco come to mind as companies who are very actively articulating the role of risk in the in the way that they manage their business and that the way they create value. Let's look at this Simon Johnson op-ed here, folks. This is the second quote from his great op-ed today. This was uh, uh, at Bloomberg. You can see it at Bloomberg.com. City Weekend shows too big to fail endures. The bank was huge. It was very highly leveraged, profoundly global. No legal authority that could handle orderly resolution. All of this is still true today, as the report makes clear. That's exceptionally strong language from the author of 13. Banks. Well, I think it's stronger than that because just like Jeff Sachs talked about, the imbalances that led to the crisis 
were not really rebalanced. And they were not rebalanced in terms of the size of the institution or the values that, that govern those co corporate cultures or the global imbalances. So that's the biggest danger. When you look at Europe, we just talked to Simon Johnson, to Jeff Sachs about this. I got professors in my head, they're just juggling there. When you, when you look at Europe and that, I'm sorry, we're looking for some form of less than structured workout. Haircuts are needed. People have to come to the table. What's a catalyst when you're getting a, a bit frictional forces within risk? What gets people to the table? Do you just need a big crisis? You need a big crisis, or you need to realize that you can't effectively compete in this world unless you fundamentally change the way you operate. You just can't be cyclical in nature in the way you take risks. You can't be not managing catastrophic environments. So the way to achieve corporate objectives is by managing risk better, and that gets people's attention. And Apple's done a good job with innovation. How do they manage risk when you're that good? Uh, different realm. That's not a financial services firm. That risk is all about innovation and market shares and customers. When it gets really difficult mm -hmm. is when you marry all of these traditional management and business factors with risk. Great. Leo Tillman. Thank you so much, Leo Tillman uh, and company.